My name is George Headley. I'm a contracting business coach. I help contractors move their business to the next level, make more money, increase their profits, and get organized and systemized, achieve sales success, and just basically build a business that works for them. So I'm here to help you today build a systemized and organized business. So people who have written systems, then they enforce them and they monitor them, absolutely make more money and are more successful than those who just kind of wing it and everything's in your head and there's no training and there's no standards and there's no systems that are enforced. And some of the people try to do them and some of them don't. So that's what we're going to try to eliminate today is a non-organized business that makes you crazy as a business owner, manager, or leader. All right. So that, let's get started talking about build a systemized and organized business. <clears throat> For those of you who know me, uh, my, uh, George Headley, I started my construction business long time ago, 30, 40 years ago, and I built it into a large construction company uh, throughout Southern California in uh, building industrial commercial office buildings. And along the way, I realized that I had to replace myself I couldn't do it all myself as I grew to over 150 employees. I had to stop making all the decisions and getting everybody to follow the systems that make us successful. So today we're going to talk about building a business that works without you doing all the work. So like I said, uh, I started my company and then uh, over the next several years, built it up to about 50 million in sales. And over the last... Uh, five, 10 years, I've been focused on business consulting, business coaching. I help contractors get their business to go to the next level, be organized and systemized. I wrote a book called How to Build Your Construction Company, How to How to Get Your Construction Business to Always Make a Profit. It's available on amazon.com. You're welcome to go for it. It's uh, quite a nice step-by-step -step program of how to get an organized and systemized business that makes a profit, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. Replace yourself with systems. Okay. So you run your business like a head coach. Head coaches can't get on the field. They can't make all the decisions. They can't micromanage. They have to let go and trust. And they can't call the same plays without upgrading, improving their people, their systems, and their training. So how do we get our teams to run like you know, Kansas City is in the Super Bowl. So what do winning coaches do? What do winning coaches do? Winning coaches have a playbook. They have written plays and standard plays. So they have a system. They have continuous improvement. They train, they practice way more than they than they actually play the game. They enforce the systems. If you if the play calls for you to go to the right, you better go to the right or you're going to get benched, right? And they hold people accountable to achieve and implement the systems. They hold regular team meetings, of course, training along with that. And then each of them have scorecards, statistics, tracking systems, scoreboards that keep them focused on winning the game. And then they trust others by delegating and letting go and turning things over to supervisors, managers, and uh, foremen and crew leaders. <clears throat> so what about you? You're the head coach of your team. You've got to play. You've got to call the plays without getting on the field, without without doing the work, without ordering the material, without scheduling the crews. You, your job is to run the business. Your people's job is to manage the program, manage the game, manage the process. So what about you? You're the head coach. You know, what we need, we need systems that are enforced by and used by everyone throughout your company. No exceptions. And so what bold plays are you going to need to call to move to the next level and build an organized and systemized machine-like business? So as we look at our, our, our business, I'm sure you know how to do the work. Do you know how to build a business, an organized business? Or do you are you the business and you don't own a business that works without you doing the work? So that's the initial question. I want you to think about what you want your business to become. You want it to work without you making all the decisions and doing all the work, right? So which are you? And so the question is, 
moving forward, how do we get out of the muck? How do we get out of the stuck in the muck? How do we get stop doing everything ourselves? How do I get to the next level? So, so I want you to really think about what I need to do to change, to do different, to move my business up the ladder of profitability and performance, right? So that's the key. <clears throat> so as we build a business, we tend to get stressed out and overworked, do too much ourselves. We tend to <clears throat> we tend to do too much ourselves. We try to do it all. We tend to get too busy and we can't get everything done. So we don't go home and we don't go to our kids' soccer game and all those things we really want to do. So we're too busy. And people can call you all day with questions and decisions and stupid little things like, where do I find Am I broke my hammer? What should I do? You know, all the little things. I got to call you. Why do they call you? Because you don't have a standard in a system. And then you, the, then you have to make all the decisions for everybody because you won't let go and trust others and you don't have standards to make it happen. So the real point is, <clears throat> do you wear too many hats? Are you responsible for everything? So in most companies, smaller companies, especially, the boss is responsible for everything. They don't trust their people. They micromanage. They make every decision. They're like a control freak. And so are you responsible for everything? Are you a problem solver? The more problems you solve, the more problems you get. Do you tell everybody what to do rather than let them decide? So when you own the problem, you are the only solution. So we have to get that off your back, onto your people's back through systems. So years ago, I created this sign that says, I solve other people's problems. And the more problems I solve, you know, when I solve other people's problems, they bring me more problems. And people responsible for nothing are responsible for nothing. So what I want to do is transfer the question from me back to my people. When they call me and ask me to solve a problem, I don't initially immediately want to solve it. I want them to solve it. So I turn it around and say, what do you think the solution ought to be? What do you, in your best judgment, what would you do? What do you think is the best choice decision to accomplish the task that you're stressed, stressed out or struggling with? So that's what I want you to think about. And the more control, control you put on your people, the less they do for you. So the less control the more they'll do for you in improving your company. That's what I want you to think about. So when, <clears throat> when your phone constantly rings or people constantly line up outside your door waiting for you to help them with their decisions, they're trying to transfer accountability and responsibility onto your back. So they're trying to get you to make the decision. Then it's not their fault. So when you're responsible for everything, you're really not going to be able to grow your business. So think about what I need to do. So what I like to say is you can't get rich with your head in the ditch. The more you do yourself, you know, here's a classic, you know, five guys standing around watching the boss digging a hole. That's so classic. Why is that? So the more you do yourself, the less your people will do for you and the less money you'll make because your head's in the ditch. You can't get rich. And so if I look at a lot of companies org charts, they're pretty funny. You know, they've got all these people in their company. They got a salesman, an estimator, a project manager, a superintendent, a foreman, a financial person. And their name's really at the top of every one of those boxes. I got to check with my boss. I just called somebody yesterday, works at a hotel. I'm scheduling a meeting with a big group. And I said, can, can we talk about the price of one item? So, oh, I have to check with my boss. I'll get back to you. Well, I'm still waiting, you know. Why can't she make a decision? This it was a $200 question. We're going to be there spending about $50,000. Give me a break. Give them a chance to make a decision and learn from their good, bad, and the ugly, right? So, so when you don't have any systems, you get stuck. So are you stuck at the level of what you can do and control? Yes, you probably are. Why? No train systems. No trained and enforced systems. So, so if we look at your company, it's a funnel, and sales come in, uh, sales come in, and uh, it goes through your system, and then there's a valve that opens or flows the net profit, the money. 
and there's a shutoff valve. So what's shutting off your business potential? Is the shutoff valve you that helps you not stay on budget, uh, not stay on schedule, your, your quality or your safety doesn't perform properly? It's usually you don't have time to make all the decisions to be everywhere at all times, so you let your people who don't have any standards and systems make the wrong decisions or follow the follow the rules or not follow the rules. You know, it, why do people keep showing up late? Because we don't do anything about it when they show up late. we got to have standards. You work at McDonald's, you show up late, you don't, you get one warning, you're gone. Uh, you can't use your cell phone while you're working at McDonald's. I mean, McDonald's is, you know, used to be minimum wage, now it's up there pretty good. But most of your workers who work for you are significantly higher paid and smarter and more responsible than people who flip hamburgers. So not to say that that's a bad job, but just in general, <clears throat> why aren't you letting them do their job, right? What's your shutoff valve? It's probably you and you're leaking money because of it. And you're, you're staying stuck because you can't grow beyond the capacity of what you can do and control. So what must you do to build an organized, systemized company? What do you need to do? Uh, a machine, a construction contracting machine what do you need to do different? What systems do you need to implement and keyword enforce, <clears throat> hold people accountable to perform them? And plus, what, what do you need to stop doing? If you're asking your people to do it, you need to stop doing it and move on to bigger and better things like achieving your sales priorities, your net profit priorities, and your relationship priorities with your customers. So in order to make things happen, we have to let go to grow, let go to grow. And uh, we're going to talk about, in another workshop I'm going to do soon, we're going to talk about hiring and managing and encouraging and motivating your people. So that'll be our next workshop. But for now, let's just talk about systems. So what happens when you do too much yourself? When you do too much yourself, that's myself years ago, 20, 30 years ago at my office. And I was, I had, I was doing everything for everybody. <clears throat> and I got stuck. What happens is I got stuck. What didn't happen is I couldn't do what I wanted to do. We weren't making the money we should have. It's because of me. I wouldn't trust my people 100%. Well, they might make a mistake. I can do it better and faster. It feels good to be in charge. And, you know, like Yogi Berra once said, after the pitch hit me, they x-rayed my head and found nothing. So it's easier to train your people or retrain you. You've got to retrain yourself. you got to stop doing their job. So we've got to let go to grow so you can make some more dough. So we've got to stop solving other people's problems. We've got to get off the field. You know, you see these NFL games, the head coach is not calling the plays. A couple of them are, but most of them have a head coach who calls the plays and a defensive coordinator. And, and the, the boss is just there managing and encouraging and, and setting the vision and keeping everybody motivated to improve. So years ago, I had a, by uh, trying to figure it out and um, uh, how to get how to get off the field, how to how to transfer. <clears throat> so, by the way, if you need help, I'm available. Just email me gh at hardhatbizcoach.com, and let's set up a time for an introductory call to see if see if see what your needs are and see if I can help. And I'd love to help you. That's what I do, and 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 relatively successful at it. So hopefully I can help you as well. <laughs> okay, so what's next? Years ago, the year was 1985. I'd just grown my business to about 50 million in sales, had 150 employees. I was trying to get my business to work, uh, but I didn't know how to let go and delegate, put in systems. And so what do I do? I wanted to get organized and in control. I wanted to grow. I wanted to make more money. I want to hold my people accountable. But I was trying to do too much myself. It's so working too hard, not enough hours, not hiring great people. Uh, and I was prepared, working on every bid and the proposal and trying to go to the job meetings and trying to meet with a customer too often and, you know, supervising, scheduling, all the things I shouldn't be doing. And because of that, my, my company was leaking oil, was leaking profits because I couldn't be everywhere. I wouldn't let go. I wouldn't, wouldn't delegate to accountable, responsible people. So I'd go to the job site and I'd say, where do I put the, re where, do, where should I put the messages? You know, I'd go out there and come back with a whole bunch of post-it notes and 
uh, you know, all the stuff I was supposed to do for the people who work for me. They asked me, hey, George, can you help me with this? Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you check on this? So I got a whole list of things that I'm doing for them. Now I'm working for them. They're my boss. And they're going, hey, George, you get that done yet? That makes me nuts, right? <clears throat> it's doing everything for everybody. And so I was trying to make all the good decisions, equipment, purchasing, subcontracting. You know, I, I'd go to Staples on the way home to get some stationery. What kind of copy machine or how about coffee we should buy? All the stupid things that I was doing that I shouldn't even, who cares? I'm trying to make 50 million in sales and trying to make five to 10% net profit. There's no reason I'm worrying about what kind of paper clips we buy, right? So I, I, it made me nuts. <clears throat> I ended up at the doctor. Yeah, I'm sorry, the, the font didn't come out. And the doctor said, George, you, you got a big problem. You got to stop doing everything for everybody. So think about yourself. It's what I call a contractor dilemma. Uh, so we get overloaded. <clears throat> we get too busy. We're not focused. There's no plan. So we react. So we're too slow and we continue to fight fires, put out fires, put out fires. And then we, we're not efficient. We leak money. And it's all because we're too busy and not focused. It's a vicious circle. And as things go round and round, we start losing money. So the question is, how are we going to fix this problem? Do I need good people? or good systems. Well, McDonald's story, as you know, is systems. You still need good people, construction, logging, contracting, whatever you're doing. You need good people and good systems. You need both. And if you have good people without good systems, you got a nightmare. You're out of control. It's not working. But if you got both, you're really going to kick it in gear and make some money. So construction's kind of like Contracting is kind of like a three ring circus. You got you're balancing everything, you're going crazy, you're up and down, you can't keep track, you're overloaded, you feel like a three ring circus. You, you know, you're juggling, you're walking the tightrope, you're trying to keep the elephants dancing, you shot out of a cannon, you're lion taming, you're working with clowns and monkeys, and everything's tight and hard. And and how do we get it systemized and organized? We need written systems that are enforced. The key, some, a lot of companies have systems. They're just not used or enforced. Some people do, some people don't. That's unacceptable. That That's worse. That's worse for morale, worse for values, worse for your bottom line than anything when you're not forcing your people to do what they should be doing, right? So what's next? How do we get everybody on the same page? How can you get everybody on the same page? We've got to have standards and systems that replace yourself so you can uh, uh, encourage your people to follow the systems, right? That's the key. So one year I took my – well, I've, I've been to McDonald's more than once. But you go to McDonald's, and what do they have? They, they make pretty much the same thing all across the country, probably the world. And the question is, what's, what's some of their standards? So if, if you ever work there, you know they have a, a picture of how to build a hamburger behind the counter so you can't screw up. It's a visual picture. It's a standard system, how we do business. Lettuce, pickles, mustard, ketchup, whatever's on there, right? Meat. Uh, and so the question for you is, do you think they know how many pickles they put on a hamburger? I mean, a lot of times I'm driving through the, the, the drive through and I say, yeah, I'd like some ketchup. And they give me like six. I just want one. Can you imagine what that costs? How many millions and millions of dollars does that cost? Because they don't have a standard. You get one ketchup or two or one napkin or two or 20. It's a lot of times you just fill a bag full of napkins. That's, that's bad systems. That's called profit loss. And so what do I have to do? So first thing, I got to have a standard. You know, if I want to build a hamburger, what do I got to have? I got to know how to build it. And then number two, I got to know how many pickles to put on it. There's two pickles on a hamburger. That's it. You don't get a choice, cook. It's two. Okay? Get it. So what's the deal? We got to replace ourselves with systems. We have to have a playbook, how we do business. Written, tracked, trained, monitored, enforced. That's the key. Written, tracked, trained, monitored, enforced. Think like football. Written plays trained, 
you keep track of who made the error, who made the football touchdown, who got the most yards. We monitor it and we enforce the systems, right? That's the key. Systems allow you to be in control without being out of control, right? And they allow you to not be there doing all the work, making all the decisions and controlling everything. So they must be enforced and you must hold people accountable to implement the systems and follow the systems. And that gives you the freedom to go do what your job description is, which is monitoring, leading, planning, supervising, uh, encouraging, making sure things are going right. And that's the key. So you've got to have a playbook so you can produce winning, consistent results, winning, consistent results. We need a playbook, just like football. <clears throat> Excuse me. So why systems? Why systems? I poured a lot of concrete in my career, several mil, uh, probably 20 or 30 million square feet of concrete slabs in my career. And uh, if I don't have them all done the same way, I end up with cracks. If I let each foreman decide how to do it, you know, we're, some are going to work and some aren't. Some are going to have cracks. Some are going to have spalling. Some are going to collapse. Some are going to crack. But if we have a standard that works, I want everybody doing it, right? I want to get everyone doing business the same way so I can produce the same results every single time. Consistent performance production equals results, right? That's what I want. Uh, that's the key, all right? So good systems. How do we create them? First of all, they're simple. They're a one-page, step-by-step, picture checklist. Do check, check, check. Or it's a picture with an arrow and tell you how to do it. It's a picture of the end result. It's written. It's visual. It's not a bunch of words on the paragraph. People don't read words. They read bullets and arrows. It, and then we train it. We got to train them. And then we got to monitor them. If we're gonna, if it's required to do a daily report, we want to make sure they actually come in. If we have a pre-pour checklist for concrete, we want to make sure that the people actually follow the pre-pour checklist. And then we have to enforce it. So think about how we have to implement our systems. That's the key. You are the key. You've got to stop what you're doing and create some systems. So there we go. So we, so systems are clear understanding, clear expectations of what's expected. This is how we want you to do the job or the results we expect you to achieve. That's the key. And you can't, you, you can't, achieve results without a clear understanding of what's expected that's clearly understood and trained. And so if you're in the office, if you're having a company meeting, if you're out in the field, the one of the meeting's goals is to enforce, train, track systems, right? Can you imagine a football team with no playbook? What they'd be talking about the huddle? Hey, you go along and you, just like third grade, right? you go along and you go over here and you go over here. That would be a disaster, right? Can you imagine? How about a basketball team? No, nope, same deal. So when we have a team meeting, here's the Alabama team. Everybody on the team has to know clearly what's expected of them. You know, I asked my foreman, how many of you are working today? I don't know. Most of them. Everybody there? Yeah, pretty much, which means no. Yeah. So think about what the goal is here. Clear understanding. So anyway, so, so the way I break it down is, I can't hold people accountable and responsible unless they clearly understand what's expected. Does that make sense? You are accountable. Well, I don't, how am I supposed to do it? So I have to have clear guidelines and clear expectations. So those are written and visual and trained. So I have to have a step-by-step -step checklist of what's expected. The end results we're supposed to, you know, this should take one day, one hour. This is how we're going to do it, when we're going to do it all those kinds of things, and then I can hold you accountable and responsible. <clears throat> so I need written job descriptions, position, player position descriptions. Uh, I need pictures of how we install things, how we do things. I need minimum results expected. Everybody should be able to do it at this level uh, within a certain time frame. Um, and then you are accountable and responsible to, to make it happen. Uh, and, and people want to make it happen. They just don't know what you want them to achieve. That's the problem because they have never been trained on the systems. You know, on-the-job training, well, yeah, who, who trained them? The guy who doesn't, was never trained either. 
So what can we do to make it happen? So if you're in different sports, uh, we have to have clear, measurable results that I'm accountable to achieve. That's the key. Clear, written, measurable results accountable that I have to achieve. And then I have to have specific responsibilities. What you're responsible to, to do, task, activities, deadlines. They have to clearly know, you know, every Monday we do this. Every Friday we do this. Every day by 4 o'clock we had to do our time cards clearly completed properly and have to be emailed in or texted in, however you guys do it. And so, you know, what I expect from my estimator is accurate estimates. Accurate. How, I got to make sure there's systems in place that allow my estimator to achieve excellence. I can't just wing it. We got to have standard systems, right? Uh, my project manager, I want him to manage the project properly. So we need to do certain things on a regular basis. Some of my standard rules for project managers, all subcontracts must be clearly completed, signed, sealed, and executed within the first three weeks of the project. That's a standard in our company. Uh, you know, shop drawing submittals must be approved within the first six weeks of a project. I mean, those are standards that will eliminate problems in errors and omissions and late schedules and profit overruns, et cetera, et cetera. So what, what will make you successful? I usually start with a problem, cracks lab. What's the solution? So we get the team together and come up with a solution to eliminate cracked slabs on, on concrete building slabs. You know, our, our warehouse slabs, are they have a lot of wear and tear on them. They got forklifts carrying heavy stuff, and they got trucks driving over them and big machines. And, you know, how do we eliminate cracks? Well, we have to do certain things a certain way. Our control joints are important. Slip dowels are important. Thickened edges are important. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of things that are standards that will eliminate the problem. So we start with a problem and work backwards to come up with a solution. What is causing you problems? Recurring problems. How do we fix it? That's the key. So we need a chain of command, a clear chain of command and level of authority. People have to know how much they can spend with or, or do, what they can do without getting the, someone to approve it. And then what's the manager's role? The boss, the manager's role is to make sure people follow the systems. They monitor, manage, oversee, coach, mentor, encourage, uh, inspire, uh, train, and enforce. So I was, I was playing golf a few months ago, and my, we, we just hired a new manager. He's, he's a really good young guy. And I said, hey, how's it going? Jeremy goes, great. I said, what are you doing, man? You got a lot of things going. You got probably 100 employees. He goes, well, my job is to hire and inspire. Now, obviously, they got to have good systems because you can't inspire somebody to do something if they don't know what you're going to do. So think about what your role is here. Uh, how are we going to make it happen? So the manager's role is to hold people accountable for results. Okay, so next, what are we going to do about drafting our systems? So we're going to have to we're going to have to draft these systems up. So processes, standards, how we do business, what I call a do manual. It's our playbook. It's what we do that's mandatory or you don't work here. That's the key. This is how we do business. If you don't like it, don't work here. Everybody follows this rules. Everybody does it this way. Biz systems are mandatory. There's no there's no decision that we all do or we don't do. So there's no excuses, right? That's the key. So we, so how do we do that? We, I'm sorry, we start a fix-it list. Things that are causing problems, the solutions we need for the problems we have. We start a fix-it list. And, and so we, we start with identifying the, the things that we need to fix, number one. Number one, what do we need to fix? Then we need to prioritize which ones we need to fix first because those are the ones that are costing us money today. Then we assign a system coordinator or a team captain, somebody to manage the system creation. And we a coordinator will keep do all the paperwork and eventually enter it into the employee due manual. Um, and so we want to 
Keep it simple. Don't forget we got a follow-up system, so make sure the system was followed. So a lot of times you need a copy to come back to the office or a checklist or something to make sure things are done. And then we assign a team to try the new system, make sure it works, and if it doesn't, we fix it. Then we then we implement it out, and we have the, the team try it and train them. And they, we have meetings. We do have training, show everybody the new system. We show them how to do it take them out to a job, show them what we need to do. And then we enforce and manage it. That's the key here, enforce and manage. So what we want to do then is, a, is create a eight and a half by 11 do manual, three ring binder. We can put all the systems in there and everybody's got one. And that way, if we need to know what to do or job startup checklist or close out or how to, how to install a door frame in a concrete wall, Everybody knows our standard way to do business, right? That's what we want to do. Create a standard do manual playbook, you know, football playbook, whatever you want to call it, right? So that's the key. So whether you need estimating, project management, job cost, field management, field production, scheduling, quality control, safety, just where, where do you need some help? Where do you need some standards so we do it right the first time? Maybe there's management, admin, HR recruiting, hiring, equipment, accounting, technology, whatever it is. When I go to a company, we always sit down and we create a, uh, and I do a pre-survey to all the employees. I say, what's working, what's not working? What do we need to fix? So I get a long list. And so when I come to their office for a one, two, three day meeting, <clears throat> we all decide what are our top priorities? What's costing us the most money? We fix that first. And then we move to the next one and the next one. So we prioritize all the things we need to do. Now, some things only take 10 minutes. A job startup checklist, that's like 20-minute issue. So let's just knock those out. But in the meantime, we need to update it. We implement a job cost tracking system. That's going to take a while. We might need some software, some technology, some training, maybe accounting help. It might take three or four months to implement. So we still have our priority list. Short-term, long-term, long-term to me is six months, all right? So then, then what we want to do is we want to make sure everybody knows exactly what their job is and what's expected, what systems are they to use, and, and we're going to enforce. <clears throat> so we get everybody together, all the project managers in this picture, and we, we decide what, what are the must-dos for project managers or superintendents or foremen? What are the must-dos? You know, one of them is a two-week look-ahead schedule. One of them is a job start checklist. One of them is a weekly punch list or a weekly safety inspection. All the things that we need to do on a regular basis. So we, may, we get the team together and get them all to be part of the process of creating systems. And then, you know, here's a here's a management meeting I held uh, a few years back in Mich or last year in Michigan. And we got all the project managers together. We got all the admin team together in the back of the room. And, we, and I'm sitting in the front office with marketing sales and estimating people. And we create a list of all the things that we are must do's, must do's to make the, make the project successful, right? And, and along the way, we might sit down and create job descriptions for every single employee, for every position. So what are the must do's for a project manager, an estimator, a supervisor, a foreman, project administrator, the accounting manager, the payroll manager, the, the sales manager, et cetera. So we create a job description of what systems they're accountable to do and when. That's the key here, right? <clears throat> and then some people actually are confused, so we might actually start with a flow chart. Well, we got a request to bid. Then we decide to bid it, and then we turn it over here. Then it goes over here. It becomes a job. We have a startup meeting. Then we do this. Then we do that. So we create a flow chart, and then that might help you think through your system creation process. So, so it's it's just a process, it's simple. So some of the things we might wanna consider are regular meetings, regular meetings. You know, whether it's a daily meeting, whether it's a monthly meeting, whether it's a quarterly meeting, uh, uh, bi-weekly, all company meeting. So we've got a list of meetings that are required daily, weekly, 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 bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly. We create a list of meetings of when we're going to review the processes, standards, and performance uh, results, how we're doing, right? Some of the 
<clears throat> some of the important uh, systems we create, uh, and if you need help, I'll help you with them, are like a pre-job startup handoff meeting when we turn it over from sales and estimating to the project team. We got to we got to sit down and decide all the things we need to do to make this project successful. And we set our goals and we set our targets. And we what standards are we going to implement on this project? Pre 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 job pre con pre turnover kickoff handoff meeting whatever you want to call it. Uh, we want to make sure we have a regular all company town hall, uh, and we have to have a standard agenda for that. And we pass out all the incentive rewards and. And uh, we, we do a lot of uh, State of the Union, how we're doing, what's coming in, what's going out. Uh, we do a, a, a review of all the jobs. We just finished photographs. We have a great meeting. We pass out uh, some trinkets and some gifts. We have some fun games. And, and we pass out checks for uh, bonuses and incentives, right? So we make it a fun day. It's very important as far as keeping your team together. That's a standard system we do. Uh, and we want to make sure the manager – meets with his direct reports or her direct reports on a regular basis. At least weekly, we got to sit down in one-on-one -on -one meeting and we create an agenda for that meeting. The manager's job is to make sure the, the, the worker under him or her is doing their job and achieving performance. So that's a standard system we have. Another one, we, we create budgets. So we have project budgets where we have how many crew hours, how, what's our – labor, material, equipment budget, uh, subcontract budget. And then we sit down at the turnover meeting. We decide, what's our goal for this job? Can we improve it? Or should we just agree that our budget's fine? And what are our action plans to make improvements uh, to our budget? So we, we sit down and have a regular meeting, a pre-job startup meeting, and we agree on the budget, right? And so we have the crew go out to the job site before we start walk the job, look for parking problems, issues, conflicts with the plans, are there, is there water out there, all those kinds of things. We need to know that in order to be successful. Uh, and so then we do a monthly job cost update report. That's a standard. That's a must do on every job. That's a monthly report. I want to know where I am on every job every month. Now I want to know where my crew is on every job every week. So this would be the big job, and then you got the, the weekly with the crew. Uh, and then we want to make sure we stay on schedule. So we have to have a clear schedule milestone chart with the terms of the contract. Contract may say we have five days to do this or two days to do that. I, I need to know that in order to be successful. So that's part of our pre-job startup meeting agenda is to make sure we clearly understand the deadlines, the milestones, and uh, the terms of the contract, right? Uh, what else? Uh, so these are just some ideas. Job startup checklist for the field. You know, what do they need? The tools, the equipment, extra materials, extra bolts, extra tie wire, whatever it is, right? Uh, extra skill saw blades, what, whatever you need. Uh, more gas, more oil, whatever, whatever your thing is, right? And then maybe we'll have a field mobilization checklist. Same idea. We fill that out and we make sure we're on the same page and we, we don't run out of things. We do a weekly inventory, et cetera. And then we want to make sure our project team walks the job every week. That's a standard system that I know enforces excellent, creates excellence, creates performance. So what do we do there? We look for quality. We look for safety. We look at crew hours versus the budget. We look for potential change order so that we're not in the contract. And we look at our schedule. Are we on budget schedule-wise or not? What do we need to do to stay on, stay on time, right? So we, So all these things are just... Outcomes of problems. You know, the number one problem I find is people bid a job with so many hours and we go over on hours. And along with hours goes your equipment. And it, it, it jobs take longer. Well, how do we fix that? These are some things we've implemented to fix it. Uh, and we do a quality inspection, cleanup, safety report every week. We have the foreman fill that out and turn it in, right? And, you know, just a simple little checklist. So what else? Uh, I'll look at schedule. I mentioned that. I want my foreman to think ahead a week or two weeks. What are we going to need over the next two weeks so I don't run out of sand in the middle of the day and the crew stands around? I don't run out of nails or bolts or skill saws or, or concrete vibrator breaks. I need a backup. Ah, what do we do? The slab's already been poured and it's hardening without a vibration. You know, what do we need? What do, I don't, I don't want to forget. 
What, what am I going to need in the next? I'm going to need an inspection by this date in order for me to do this date. Those kinds of things. And then we have a closeout checklist, of course. <clears throat> well, we could spend hours just talking about systems, and we could spend another two days creating systems for your company. So I would encourage you to sit down and think about what systems will solve problems and create solutions for your current cost overrun, schedule late, safety problems, uh, you know, all the things we get we get messed up in this business doing. What are some things that'll solve those problems? So identify the problems, things we need to fix, and then create a plan to improve your company. I made a goal in my company <clears throat> after I got larger and out of control. And I said, I'm going to dedicate Friday afternoon to system creation. And I set aside Friday afternoon. I sat down and I bring in the team that I needed and we just start working on it. I tried once. I said, I'm going to create one new standard a week, 50 standards, 52 standards. And by the end of the first year of doing that, man, it was a pain. We were organized. We were systemized. If you make that same commitment, I guarantee you, you'll build a machine that produces nothing but money. All right. So let's make it happen. Okay. Scorecards, et cetera. And anyway, if I can help you, give me a call. Uh, send me an email if, if I triggered something and I, I might have a workbook or a, a template or something I can help you with. If you're looking for help or if you want to talk, send me a note and I'll be glad to get on the phone. We'll set up a Zoom session and I'll help you achieve your goals. All right. Thanks a lot. George Headley here, Hard Hat Biz Coach, gh at hardhatbizcoach.com or visit my website. I've got a series of templates and tools that you can download. I've got uh, five five-hour video courses on how to build a great company. And of course, you can get my book at amazon.com. Anyway, thanks for having me and we'll see you soon.